Hey poetry lovers, it's Billy from Miso Shitomoji coming to you with today's poem. Of course we'll do the poem and then the poet and then a little bit of my thoughts afterwards. Uh, you can see behind me here I'm, I'm at uh, Meijo Park in Nagoya. Okay, so today's poem. It is Yuhi ni sasu yama no ha bakari arawarete kiri ni shizumeru aki no kawanami and I, I, I was thinking of maybe changing things a little bit. Usually I, I just say the English translation that I've given, but I'm always putting it on you know, the side of the screen next to it. So you can read it, read along with me uh, for the English translation. So I thought maybe I could break down the individual parts of the poem and uh, it might help you, you know, you could think of your own translation. Sorry, you could think of your own translation that might be better than mine, or you can learn a little bit of Japanese if you're interested. So the first part of the poem is Yuhi ni Sasu. Uh, Yuhi is the evening sun. Uh, the characters are for evening and for sun. So, so you can imagine uh, the sun going down in the late afternoon. And then Sasu literally means like to pierce something, to pierce, to cut through. So Yuhi ni Sasu, something is piercing the evening sun. Then the next line is uh, Yama no ha bakari. So Yama no ha, uh, you might be thinking of Yamaha, but in this case it's Yama no ha. Um, Yama no ha is, it's like the ridge or the outline of the mountain. And then bakari means only. So it's only the, the ridge or the outline of the mountain is, you know, piercing the morning sun. The next part, areware te. Uh, Arawarete is like to appear, to be seen. And then it goes to uh, Kiri ni shizumeru. Uh, kiri is literally like a, a, a mist or a fog. And then shizumeru means like to drown or to surround or like to pull down or to obscure. And then the last part is uh, Aki no Kawanami. So Aki is the autumn and then Kawanami in this case. Uh, Nami is like usually waves, but if you're thinking about a, a river, then it's like ripples in a river. So you've got the outline of the mountain is all that can be seen piercing the evening, the evening sun. And this is where like the break, the, the kugire comes in the poem. Usually there's like a, a place where you could do a, a comma or a pause. And then the, you know, the second part of the poem is, is kind of like either a contrast or a reinforcement. It, it, it has like a relationship to the first part of the poem. Uh, in this case, uh, I chose to translate it as, so only the ridge of the mountain can be seen piercing the evening sun. And then the, there's the idea of maybe there's like a mountain stream and everything else like the base of the mountain is being hidden in like a fog or a mist so the the ripples of the mountain stream can't be seen because of that heavy fog or that heavy uh, mist uh, so this was actually written by yesterday's poem uh hojo masamura's son and the, the poem is, uh, there's not a lot of information about his son. Uh, he was a warrior, kind of like his father, but he didn't, uh, you know, go to the same level. Like he never became uh, the, uh, the, like the facto ruler that his, his father did. Um, his poem is actually um, a riff of an earlier poem by Kujo Yoshitsune or Fujiwara no uh, Yoshitsune. So, there's a lot of um, when when we when we learn about these poems a lot of times the classic poems are actually like variations or they do like callbacks to earlier poems and a lot of these poems are collected there's like you know you'll hear me say the manyoshu which is the oldest compilation of uh, japanese poetry there's the, the uh, kokinshu there's the shin kokinshu there's the gosenshu Families have their own compilations. Like I, I believe a few days ago, we talked about the Ise no Shu. These are all like, they're kind of like the mixtapes of their day. So they're somebody, some uh, usually court noble compiled all these poems because he wanted to, you know, flex how 
sensible and how refined his taste in poetry was. Sometimes it's, you know, compilations just to preserve family history. But a lot of times this was, you know, the nobility having nothing better to do but to put together, like, some of these compilations are, you know, 1,500, 2,100 poems. So it's, it's a pretty big compendium. And, you know, you could show off how intelligent you were and how good your education was by composing a poem that refers to a poem from a few centuries ago. And then the people who are reading the poem could also be like, oh, well, yes, that's a very interesting variation on Fujiwara no Yoshitsune's poem. So I see what you did there. Um, you can see how, <laughs> and you can see why these, um, these, uh, like in this case, it's the Hojo family, you know, the Hojo family were in charge of the country for a couple centuries, but um, eventually uh, it, it's like a, a creeping disease where they get so caught up and so preoccupied with like artistic pursuits that they don't really do a good job of administering to the country or like, you know, shoring up their own military might to prevent uh, being overthrown or just losing general uh, control of the country to people from the outlying provinces. And that's, you know, eventually kind of what happened with the, uh, the Hojo after the Mongol invasions. So now my thoughts to the poem. Um, a lot of times we try to translate what they call Dolka and Dolka is literally like a road poem or like a, a way poem. Uh, Dol meaning like the way, but it can also mean a path. And those are poems that, um, <laughs> I don't have a, a selfie stick or anything, so my, my arms are getting tired here. But uh, those are usually poems that like try to teach you something, they have a moral message. And uh, I, I alluded to this a, a few days ago, but when you're doing like dolka after dolka after dolka, the kind of impact of the moral message starts to kind of fade away when you're just looking at one after the other after the other. So as kind of like another palate cleanser, uh, I wanted to do a poem today about just nature. Uh, I, I think the, 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 the imagery that is evoked by today's poem is quite beautiful. So uh, I, I just wanted to do a, a simple, you know, poem about appreciation of nature. I try to come to a, a beautiful spot here in, in the park. Um, I, I, I really had a kind of like a back and forth with myself today. You know, I live in Nagoya. Nagoya is, I've probably mentioned before, but uh, Nagoya is called the White City, or it was, uh, I think there was a song in the 80s that coined the term. But it's not called the White City because of, you know, being like pristine, beautiful place. It's called the White City because there's not a lot of nature and it's mostly uh, buildings and open roads with not a lot of shade or cover. Uh, you know, so if you're looking for beautiful scenery, like I, I wish I could have shown a mountain today, but there's no real mountains around. Uh, Nagoya is not the place for you. Nagoya is good for like asphalt and chicken wings. If, if those are things you're looking for, then come to Nagoya. And around me, there is a ton of construction going on. Uh, I don't know. You can't really see from here. If, if you look kind of in the background, you might see some like, blue and that that is actually like tarps on the outside. They're, they're rebuilding, uh, uh, I guess, a sports center here in the middle of the park. And the, I, I wanted to maybe talk today about how there's a lot of destruction of nature going on in Nagoya. Uh, you know, I, I've lived here near the park for quite a while and it used to be, you know, just pretty untouched. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot going on. It was, it was like a place that you could come to just take a break and relax, but that's, you know, that's going away. They've, they've started really trying to develop it. You know, they're spending money, building new things. But I, I don't want, you know, this channel and I, I don't want our project here at Miso Shitomoji to be kind of surrounded by complaining or error of, you know, negativity. Uh, I think it's really easy to find problems in the world and point out the problems and, you know, kind of the idea of misery loves company. Like people will resonate with that and be like, yeah, that's, you know, that's too bad. And oh, yeah, why, you know, I, I thought Japan was supposed to, you know, be the home of Ghibli and, you know, they appreciate nature and what's going on. But I, I don't want things to be about that. I, I would rather try to make uh, positive contributions to people's day. There's already enough content out there of people complaining about things that are going on in, in their lives. Um, and, you know, sometimes those are perfectly valid complaints and they're things that need to be addressed. 
but I don't feel like me making videos about, you know, all the construction going around or how noisy it is. I, I don't think that is really contributing anything beneficial to you. Uh, I, I want these kind of daily video updates to be little sources of inspiration. You know, you just get a little glimpse into my life or to life in Japan. You know, if you're watching from overseas and you're wondering what it's really like, you know, Japan is not really like what you see on a, a lot of like the YouTube uh, Japan channels, like traveling to Japan and all those things. Uh, there's if you're actually living here and like, you know, day to day, I think the reality is different than what you would expect. And I want to, you know, present that in a positive light because I love living here and Japan has given me so much. So I'm trying to give back a little bit by uncovering this poetry, introducing people to the parts of Japan that I love. And hopefully that will bring a, a little bit of a positive light to your day and not just me, you know, bitching and moaning about, oh, you know, it's can't believe they're doing construction again. It's so dusty and noisy around my house. That's that's not really helpful. Anyways, sorry for the ramble. Hope you guys are having a good day. Thank you very much for subscribing and for watching these videos. And hopefully they'll, again, continue to improve in the future. Uh, right now, I am trying to go through... Uh, a, a while ago, I, I made a, a long audio recording about the life of Hosokawa Gracia or Hos Hosokawa Garasha. And it was like over an hour long, but I only did an audio recording. So right now I'm trying to put visuals to it to upload it to this channel. So there will be like a, a, a one hour presentation on the life and times of Hosokawa Garasha. Uh, that's coming up hopefully in the near future. And then I've also started the initial steps of researching to do a similar video on Banke Yotaku. You guys might notice that uh, I upload poems about Banke and from Hakuin from time to time. Uh, I'd like to do Hakuin as well. He's kind of the reason why I came to Japan, but uh, there's a lot more material there. Banke, it's a little bit easier to cover all your bases. Anyways, just a quick update. Hope you guys are having a great day. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe. Even if you didn't enjoy, please subscribe. It really helps out. But thank you and take care. Bye-bye.